Well, guys, I'm back with a few more things to go through because all either deserve a mention or because it's ironic, funny, or just plain stupid, which is actually common these days. Now, first off, while it's not really news, it is funny that the Tories are airbrushing Doris out of their campaign leaflets for the local upcoming elections next month. I personally find it pretty comical that he's gone from election campaign king to complete liability in, what, just over two years. Obviously, the reasons for this are going to be varied, but will include things like failure to control immigration, cost of living crisis, net zero nonsense, tax increases, bat flu spending, lockdowns and party gate, of course. Though, to be honest, I think it's mostly lefty Labour voters who care about the party gate fines right now, when the rest is what really matters. Either way, being airbrushed out like Corbyn is pretty funny and both embarrassing at the same time. But following on from that and just as funny is apparently Russia has now banned Boris Johnson from entering the country also. Yes, I'm sure Boris is devastated by this news, but what's really funny about it is the fact that Putin also banned Nikola Fish Lip Sturgeon from entering the country too. This puppet lunatic, it seems, is on par with Boris in the eyes of Putin, it's gotta be said. That, I have to say, made me laugh a bit when I read it, but now let's move on to something a little more serious. This starts with reports a London Labour Council plans to rename a park after Diane Abbott because the person it named after currently is white and they want it to be named after someone who's black. Diane Abbott is the one who's being touted as something that apparently a bunch of kids chose. So guys, get ready for Diane Abbott Park. It will be located at 115 2 Left Feet Street, North London. <laughs> Of course, all jokes aside, this is complete insanity, but it does not end there, as more concerning than that is the fact that they are schoolchildren as young as five for suggestions on this. And as you might expect, they did that after brainwashing them with talk about George Floyd and systemic racism and all of this. Now I bet they didn't talk about George Floyd's convictions against pregnant women and shit like that, but either way, they literally brainwashed these kids before asking them to pick someone they have suggested. Because I'll bet your bollocks to a barn dance right now that most kids have no bloody idea who Diane Abbott even is, let's be honest. Now up next, we might as well shit on the government's net zero eco crap because here reports are talking about a small part of it costing us £330 billion. What this actually means is it will likely cost us more like £9 billion since that's how these things usually go, but even £330 billion should be enough to wake people up. Also, any figure quoted here is just for this one policy, it doesn't include the hundreds of other lunatic policies Boris has shat out over the course of time, fully supported by his eco-spunk trumpet wife, of course. It, it accounts for the extraordinary role of somebody like Carrie Simmons. You know, I mean, she manifestly is more important than any, prime, than any cabinet minister. Why are we having the extraordinary hoo-ha in Glasgow? I mean, read anything Boris wrote before two years ago, and you will find he's a complete climate sceptic. Now, this one here directly affects property owners, buyers and landlords, which really just makes it even more demented, but shows that this net zero lunacy will cost a million times more than most people actually think. I mean, most people don't know that green energy producers are already subsidised up to the eyeballs by the taxpayer, with more planned in short order that will be funded by price increases on your energy bills. But this plan will force everyone involved in property to literally ensure that their buildings are up to energy performance standards that are not worth a wet wank on a Sunday morning, if I'm honest. And will actually make your house less energy efficient apparently, but then again, does that surprise you with the clown world we live in? So yeah, pay more money to spend more money trying to heat it with piss poor heat pumps is literally what the government are saying to you here. This will obviously cost tens of thousands per building as it stands which will then need to be subsidised by the taxpayer once more making this yet another net zero con. What a bloody shock that is there. Now up next let's deal with some bat flu stories because they're still hanging around like a fart in a hazmat suit as you might have noticed. Up first, we got some studies saying that the start in the first lockdown a week earlier than we did could have led to 34,000 fewer deaths, which comes from ever yet more reliable modelling. <laughs> you serious? Obviously, this means it must be 100% reliable, given how good they have been on this topic for the past two years or more, as you might remember. 
Oh, and on top of that, it's also claimed that this would have half the time spent in lockdown, which I got a cool bullshit on right now. We know for a fact that the government did not lift lockdown based on the so-called data, so half in it was never going to happen, let's be honest. In fact, I'm sure they only opened the country back up as Parliament's summer break was due to start and they wanted to go away and that was the only way they could do it without being raked over the bloody coals like Boris is now over the party gate bullshit. So, even if this study was correct, and I'm not saying it is, you can't ignore the fact that these twats didn't follow the science bloody ones. Oh, and remember, any time credible experts in science or medicine disagreed with the given narrative, they literally got cancelled by social media companies and smeared in the press. That there obviously means you're not following the science or anything close to it, you're literally following an agenda and nothing more. But anyone who can't see that now should pull their head out of their own arsehole and bloody quick. Now up next, and while we're talking about bat flu bullshit, I might as well mention the IT firm taking over the delivery partner for the NHS's COVID pass, or vaccine passport as it should be called. Yes, apparently a Danish firm called Net Company are going to be the delivery partner for this with a 12-month contract valued at £80 million, pounds, it's reported here. Now in this article it's claimed this is to wind down the use of it and all of that, but obviously I don't believe it for a second and I expect most of you won't either. Though I say that because it's got an extension clause of up to 36 months which on its own obviously sounds a bit fishy. This is before you get into the government talking about second year costs which tells me the second year is already a dead certain with this contract here. And shit, I would bet the full 36 months will be used because we got job adverts for roles working on this and the government openly admit they plan to use this for international travel into the future. Of course, that means it is being normalised with the aim of eventually having it used nationally but likely no longer as a bat flu pass and more as an identification and payment system. Now, in other related news, apparently they can cure heart attacks now using the same tech as they used in medical treatments dished out to the public last year. Yes, here in the mail they say, scientists discover world's first cure for heart attacks using the same mRNA technology as the bat flu vaccines. Now, obviously, stopping heart attacks is great, especially since we seem to have witnessed a bit of a rise in the number of them over the past 12 months or so. But I've got to say that some people will remain sceptical due to the fact that certain 100% safe and effective medical treatments are actually known to cause heart problems, you know, like myocarditis and heart attacks in some people. Now, it actually states they've tested this on two pig hearts only, with plans to test it on humans within two years or something like that. So really, they ain't cured shit, but it does raise a few questions about it, don't it? Now, up next, we've got a deal with something I said was going to happen when Boris announced his illegal immigrant processing centre plan for the north of England the other day. You might remember I said the people up there won't want this shit near their asses and guess what, I was 100% spot on because obviously why bloody would they? But I guess them going ahead with this and promoting it like they did just shows how out of touch with politicians really are because they actually think this is a bloody good thing. Obviously if it was some uninhabited island well away from the mainland people might well bloody support it and I would too. But dumping them on an old RAF base is just penalty and Napier Barracks 2.0 if you ask me. And actually thinking about it, one of them, so-called refugees, staying in one of those places set fire to it you might remember, so we could well see the same here before too long. Either way, this £100 million centre that they promoted apparently is only going to roll 500 migrants or so, making it a complete waste of money and won't lower the costs of hotels because another thousand will arrive tomorrow and be put up in the same hotels. But I've got to say, more concerning than that is the fact that it won't stay at 500 stuck in this base and the number could well be more than 1,200 people who actually live in the nearby village before too long. I mean, for instance, the media states there's only 60 kids in the local school or something like that, so obviously it's not very big, is it? And given reports I've covered before about Penalty Barracks immigrants hanging around parks trying to groom schoolgirls, I would say the locals should be very vigilant if this goes ahead, which obviously it looks like it will do. Oh, and me saying that is actually reinforced by the fact that these boat wankers will be free to come and go as they please with no locked doors or curfew, just a roll call at 10pm that is a safeguarding call, not them being told to return to the camp or anything like that. 
Obviously, it's fucking insane, and like I said, dangerous, but the government don't care about that because it's not their neighbourhoods that will be affected by this, is it? But anyway, guys, I think that's about enough for this video here, so I will leave it there, though let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. And actually, I might even start doing these multi-topic videos live to save some time and have a laugh with you guys while I do it. Oh, and on top of that, I've been setting up something that allows viewers who are interested to join in weekly group voice chats with me, live streams and shit like that. You might call it a Patreon membership, but without the monthly charge that them websites have. Either way, I'll have an announcement on that very soon. For now though, I'm gonna love you and leave you, cause I've been droning on for far too long.